Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you how to turn off some of these annoying blocks that come on Magento by default built into their default theme. So some of these blocks you may have noticed. Uh, so this may look different than yours because I have our theme installed on it. Uh, but if you were seeing this typically, you'd be seeing this PayPal logo um, right here in the right sidebar. And uh, there's a whole bunch of these other blocks like the, um, the cart in the sidebar, the back to school logo, the dog picture. Uh, these are sort of things that pop up throughout Magento that they've put in here by default. And let's say you just want to turn them off. Okay. So we're going to be doing that by using a file called local.xml. And what this is, is this file is going to be the last file that Magento looks to when determining these layouts. And because of that, you're able to put anything that you want to override in this one particular file and everything is going to get overridden that you tell it to. So this is an easier, let's say if you want to remove a whole bunch of these blocks, it's going to be easier uh, to create this local.xml file than it would be to copy and paste in all the XML files you need and modify them there. So let's go ahead and create a new file. Um, I'm going to do that within Sublime Text under app, and then design, and then front end, and then our theme, default, and then side of layout. I'm going to click new file, and I'm going to save this as local.xml. OK, so here is local.xml, and in here we want to have a normal XML tag, you can copy this from one of your other ones. Uh, in fact, we can just go ahead and do that. If you're familiar with XML, uh, you know exactly how this should look. You have opening and closing tags and everything like that. But all we need inside of this local.xml file is a XML tag, the header tag, and we're going to have layout, um, and then we're going to need default. So just like we had before with default, this is going to be default. And inside of this default is going to be everything that we want to override. So let's go in here and let's save this file. And let's think about what we want to uh, have overridden. Let's go back to our page here and check out that PayPal logo. So we're seeing this in its mage PayPal block logo and you can see this is being generated in the template paypal partner logo phtml so let's go ahead and find this xml file and let's check this out um if we scroll down here we can find it under paypal.xml if you remember you can find it in directly past the uh the directory that's directly after the template so default template paypal therefore we know this is going to be paypal.xml and let's open this up in Sublime Text here. Okay, let's scroll down here. And the one we want in particular, let's go back to our home page here, is this uh, block logo. Let's scroll down here and we can see exactly which one this is. So if we know that this, uh, this right here is being generated by template PayPal partner logo, let's actually search for logo.phtml in here. And we can see several of these things are using it. And because of that, we know that the uh, block with the name of PayPal partner right logo is using this template. Um, we know that this is the block that we want. So let's go ahead and copy the name directly out of this block here um, and put it into our local file. To do that, we just make a new tag. And this tag is going to be a remove tag. So this remove tag is going to remove a certain block. And since this is the last file that gets rendered, this is going to remove this block from every instance. So let's do name is equal to that. And let's close out our XML tag. Let's save this file. And let's refresh our page to see what happened. OK, we can scroll down. It looks like our PayPal logo is no longer there. Um, Let's go further with this. Let's see this popular tags. We remember this one because we have already copied over this tag.xml file, and we have this local tag file in our own theme by now. 
So let's see how this happens if we even put a remove for this inside of our local .xml file. And I'm going to do the same thing as last time. I grab the name of the block and now I'm going to save it. Let's refresh this and it doesn't show up. Because like I said, this is the last thing that gets rendered. So uh, it doesn't matter what else you're doing on your page to say, hey, show up. Uh, it's not going to show up. Okay, so let's check out this image right here. And this is the back to school call out thing. Um, I don't know why it's having such a hard time finding this image. Uh, for some reason, it's not finding it. But regardless, I don't want this back to school block to show up. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure you probably don't either because you you know you didn't make it yourself and it's some generic image so let's come back to our our page here and we know that this is going to be in template callouts uh and then write column ph date dot html so but i know you might be getting the hang of this you'll see this template callouts and you'll know to look for callouts dot xml and you'll get here and you'll be super upset when you don't see it because you'll feel like you've just started to understand this. Well, these callouts are something that are actually a little bit more particular. These callouts are actually hard coded into the Magento default layout.xml file. So let's actually check this out. And this is going to be in catalog.xml. So just by looking at this file, I don't have any code completion on, but you can see that we have this block here and it's write permanent callout. Uh, and the temp template is using, just like we uh, would assume here, it's using callouts, write column. It's exactly the one we're looking for. Um, but what we wanna do here is we don't wanna import this XML file, whatever. We're just going to do the same thing we did before. And now that we have the name of it, we can check write permanent callout. Um, and we can use that. I'm actually just going to throw this in Sublime Text now so I can just copy copy that right out so I don't have to uh, type it and possibly get something wrong. So let's scroll down here. Uh, I'm going to look for write dot, okay, write permanent callout. This is the block we want. Um, and th these are sort of a pain. I don't know why they're different. Uh, let's go to here, remove name. And then our name, our right call out, save it, come back here. Uh, my page crashed for some reason. Okay, cool. We're back. I've refreshed. And our right column call out is nowhere to be found. Okay, let's do one more. Let's check out uh, this my cart. Let's say we want to remove this my cart. Uh, you know, you might want to be putting this somewhere else by default. You just want to shut it off in this particular spot. Well, let's uh, do exactly what you think. We're going to go check template and then check out. So this one's going to be happening like we'd expect. We're going to look at checkout.xml. We'll throw this in here and let's go back to our page. We're going to be looking for something with sidebar.phtml. Let's find this sidebar.phtml. Okay. And we see that the name of this particular block is right here. We can copy the name as we have done so uh, so many times already, name equals, okay, save this, refresh the page, and we're not going to see our cart there anymore as you'd expect, because we've done all these examples and it's turned out the same every time. So now we know how to shut off these blocks like the dog and, uh, well, I should keep in mind that the dog is actually a call out just like the back to school is a call out. Those are the weird ones, but um, anything else like the PayPal logo, uh, any of these things, you can turn them off just by overriding them in your local.xml. Then you don't have to edit any of these XML files that come with Magento, and it's nice and easy to maintain. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hit me up in the comments. Uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use a grid framework. We're going to be using skeleton grid framework to start getting our CSS a little bit more organized and get the site looking like uh, an actual site. And it's going to be responsive, so that means it's going to work well on mobile uh, browsers as well. It's going to look good on everything. Okay, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you can hit me up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts. And thanks for watching.